free speech is becoming a more pressing issue. Now, is that just uh, a, a, a apparent to us, or is it to do with the failure of new liberal politics, or the proliferation of the internet and social media over the last 20 years, giving a platform to many people who wouldn't otherwise? What is it about this time that makes questions of free speech so pressing? Um, I, I think it's to do with the sort of aforementioned collapse of the liberal consensus, the collapse of, of liberal institutions and people's trust in those institutions. Um, I think it's it's also to do with the, the fact that the right are incredibly savvy in their tactics that they employ. I mean, it, it's almost like a, an expansion of, of the Nazi Party's idea of you enter democracy in order to deconstruct it. So you participate in elections, you participate in, in decent discussion, um, you, you, you put on a suit um, with a nice little symbol on your lapel, um, and that's your wedge issue. So what you're seeing is this weird alliance between certain sections of the journalistic profession and also the far right, where it's pushed forward that what's the problem with our collapsing public discourse, with our collapsing politics, is a small group of left students on campuses, and that becomes your wedge issue. We live in a world in which people don't feel as if there are quantifiable moral terms. We're not rooted. And in a world like that, the far right can position itself as, as the force which has all the answers, the force which can give you a settled identity, and that settled identity is based on who you oppose. And so, especially with the rise of neoliberalism, with an atomization of society, with secularism as well. You've got the far right position in itself as a defender of Western Christianity, of whiteness, of Europa. And I think this is entirely manufactured. And I think we need to, that's why we need to counter it in actually a really aggressive way, which is why I think that the whole debate over no platforming, I think it's about us being even more stern on that because we can't allow this wedge to open up. I completely agree with Robert on that, and actually I, I sort of disagree with Keith. I don't think. I think one of the problems has not been the collapse of the liberal consensus, but of liberal courage. We have been very unable, because of the right wing has been so organized and, and the onslaught has been so uh, a strategic really on every front um, and it has become obvious to me now that if for in the last two or three years if the left and even liberals who are not necessarily of the left but who have absorbed some of the values that came out of the tragedies of the two, two world wars had stood up much more assertively and taken the blows you know, you, you, you're this, you're an enemy of the people, you're, um, you hate the West, blah, 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 taken those blows, but actually said there are lines. The no, in my book, I seriously defend young people, especially young university students, and some of their decisions and their values. They absolutely have the right to live by those very good values, actually, that they were nurtured in. And I have no problems, actually, with the fact that I'm a part-time professor at Middlesex. I do not want to see Tommy Robinson appearing on my campus. I do not. I will do anything to keep him out. Can I ask a genuine question? Because this is one I worry about or think about. How many of us, how many of you in the audience, have changed a deeply held view as a result of somebody having a really good argument with you. How many people? That's more than I thought, because I think that doesn't happen as often as we hope that it can. What happens is people get more entrenched in their views. For my sins, I'm often paired with a man called Brendan O'Neill. I don't know if you know who Brendan O'Neill. For some reason, they find us very entertaining. Um, it's really not. But Nothing I say can move him in his attitudes. He, he takes a very libertarian view of society. He's a free speecher who said just yesterday, the night before we were on together, that people should be allowed to drink, smoke, gamble, uh, get very fat, 
die, and the state should do nothing. Okay, so it's a true, I suppose, honorable libertarian position. So we talk, we argue, everybody finds this entertaining. We do not change each other's minds. So I think there is something to be asked about this. Oh, if we argue with Tommy Robinson really, really well, you know, he'll say, I'm really sorry about Muslims. And as he did once, do you remember? There was a moment when he said, I'm so sorry. And I think I'm going to, I think he even thought he was going to become a Muslim or he went off with this guy called Majid Nawaz on, do you remember? Lasted three seconds. Um, so I think we have to act, I totally agree with, with, with this view that we have not been strong. And we've been so cowardly for being, you know, what if they call me a censor? What if they call me this? You know, I for one, I'm really pleased Katie Hopkins is gone. I don't miss her. <laughs>